there's another clip here also we need to kind of talk about regarding um Ari Shafir's um comment regarding the whole Brian Brendan no Brian Callan Chris Alea thing when Chris Alea got accused of what he got accused of how the fire and the kid responded to it bloody but just in general how comedians act when their friends get cancelled and yet very interesting perspective on it that's going to be play that I think is really interesting to kind of look at because I think he's really trying to say something else but he's afraid to say it which is funny because it's Irish's fear. But let's play the clip anyway. Start doing that. Let me break up with this. It's tough. We've all been in that situation. It's tough. If you're new, you're in your 20s. I don't know exactly the right way to do it. And then you have this third guy who's just friends with me. Imagine if one of my one of our friends was accused of sexual misconduct in the press. And we went on air and said, oh, I haven't talked to him yet because I was too busy getting eye surgery done. But if he did this, it was terrible. Mm -hmm. Instead of just going, uh, yeah, that's my friend. Fuck off. Yeah. Or say nothing. Or say nothing. Right. Just in case he did do that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I put of, your foot in your mouth. Because yeah. some of my friends yeah. are pieces of shit. But, but uh, I thought that was an interesting clip, right? Because essentially what I think he's trying to say, but he's probably afraid to say it, is that entertainers or maybe just stand-ups in general, specific to be to stand-ups, because they're so like, you know, these guys think they're so special that, you know, according to Joe Rogan, they're like, there's only 1,000 of them in the world. They're like the orators of our times. They say the things that we that we are afraid to say as regular civilians. They have the finger on all this like nonsense, highfalutin stuff, right? When really that the bottom rungs of entertainment, along with DJs, right? Along with flipping guys who sing, you know, play acoustic guitar in bars and pubs and shit. That's where we are. DJs, comedians, and guys that play acoustic guitar in bars. We're the same sort of level, but these guys think they're fucking philosophers and shit. What I think he's trying to say is that because they're stand up comics, they should be allowed to just be themselves and and being themselves means that they're probably going to do some fuck shit or it also means because they're comics they have to kind of have this element of like darkness about them some some kind of weird stuff going on and they should be allowed to do that they should be excused there shouldn't be any kind of rules or cancellations with comics because you know you shouldn't be surprised this guy's a stand-up comic type of thing that's the kind of thing they're trying to say in a way, I feel like it in some way, shape or form, because I've heard Joe Diaz say before on podcast also when the whole cancel culture thing was coming after stand up comics that it's a really hard to think to sort of like label and to kind of put on the feet as stand up comics because that whole world, which I agreed with him in the podcast, I think he said is really dark because essentially you're performing in bars and clubs at night. And it's also an industry where a lot of people are, you know, it's kind of really competitive. You have to pick, people have to be picked to get in certain places. Um, it's hard to get in certain places. And maybe if you are a woman, there's nothing wrong if you're consenting to using what you have to kind of get forward because people do whatever they can to get forward because the opportunities are so, there's, there's not many of them. So I think Joe Diaz is basically saying that it's hard to really kind of retroactively go back and say this was wrong or that was wrong because everybody was sort of like willing participants in it because it was just this weird, crazy game that was kind of like seen as unregulated, no oversight, blah, 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 which maybe is an excuse to be a creep, but there's some truth in it. But I feel like what he's trying to say in this regard, um, Irish Shafir, is that there should just be no rules when it comes to or no consequences really to the actions of stand-up comedians which is absolutely insane and really kind of you know gets into the psyche of how these guys are where they legitimately kind of feel like they're better than people or regular people which i've always kind of really laughed at and i thought was really interesting because they are the i've kind of thought the same thing of like youtubers at like the kind of the la ones the ones that like show the mansions and the fast cars essentially they're relying on like regular people like kids who you know like te like grown-ups who sleep in bunk beds basically right um to basically pay their bills weirdly enough but they're also showing off stuff to their audience that their audience could never afford i never understood that dynamic of like why a, a viewer will be happy that a content creator they're supporting is buying 17 lamborghinis it's like it does nothing for you <laughs> you know what i mean but then I feel like maybe there's, you know, maybe that could be explained because you're watching a journey. You saw that person when they had one view and now they've got 17 Lamborghinis. It's kind of nice to see that journey. But I think with stand-up comedians, I feel like they have a legit sense that they feel like they're better than the audience. 
or they feel like they're sometimes better than society at large. And you hear a lot with those little comments that they make about civilians, regular people, or sometimes they'll make comics, comments about, oh, I had to go to this thing, or I was with regular people, and I couldn't joke the way I joke with you guys. Only comics get this. It's like, huh, I wonder why they like that. I wonder why somebody, and again, think about it. They have to rely on regular people like you and I to pay their bills because we're the ones that go to these comedy shows. We're the ones that buy drinks. We buy chicken fingers. Again, another mention of those, right? Um, we're, we're buying their specials if they're selling DVDs or, you know, albums and whatnot. I just find that really interesting how they think they're better than the audience, but then the audience is what's sustaining them. Like, why is that? Why can't it just be like, hey, I put on a good show. That's why maybe I think, that's why maybe I think um, guys like, who's that guy I'm thinking of? Uh, that's why maybe I think guys like Fluffy, like the really commercial comedians, do so well because they treat it like an art form, and they treat it like they're entertainers, like they entertain the crowd. They love the crowd. They connect with them, but they never. They're kind of always grateful and thankful for what they have, even at the, the at that kind of level of celebrity. Do you know what I mean? Like they're not really like they kind of they don't just look down on them and you know laugh at them and shit. Or do like, you know, that horrible Akash type of crowd work where you're essentially ripping into the crowd and despising them. I don't know. I kind of get the feeling that those kind of high, high caliber ones, like that guy that, that pretends he's like a country guy. Who's the guy? He's another good one. I forgot his name. Uh, he's, like a, he's like a Bob the Builder type. Not Bob the Builder, but he's like a country dude. And he pretends, he's like, he plays a character. What's his name? Fuck. Do you guys remember what I'm talking about? He's like a white dude. He's like a comedian. And he plays a character. I think he wears a cowboy hat, if I'm not mistaken. Does he wear a cowboy hat? Or like he tries to... He's like a country guy. That's it. Yeah, cable guy. That's the one. John Bader has got a cable guy. That's why maybe people like that are so popular. Larry the Cable Guy. Maybe that. Maybe that's why. Maybe. Maybe. Because they're just like what they are. They're comedians. Eh? Do you know what I mean? They put on the show. They're thankful for the audience. They connect with them. I don't know. It's some, there's something weird about it in general. But yeah, that's their impression of it. Um, I do find his explanation kind of correct though what he said about Brian Kellen. I think even at the time when the whole Brian Kellen thing happened and he made that comment about flipping Chris D'Elia and said, oh, you know, I'd never hang out with him. Like, I will say something controversial. Like, as much as I think, as much as I didn't like how the comedy community addressed it, because for me personally, I don't care. Because none of this stuff really affects me, unfortunately. As bad as that is to say, I really don't care. Yeah, if, if Chris is out there diddling, it's upsetting and stuff, but it doesn't really affect me, so it doesn't really matter. If I'm a fan, I'm still going to watch your stuff anyway, but if I'm if I'm not, and I don't care really, because I you know, just don't care. But what I didn't like was that for like, I felt like two years plus, it felt like we were being battered over the head with conversations about culture war and about cancel culture on all their podcasts in LA. All these LA comedians were flipping, going on so much about cancel culture and culture wars. It was getting nauseating, right? It was just annoying, like enough with this. I was happy they stopped talking about trans bathrooms and shit, but it just wouldn't stop about flipping culture wars and flipping um, cancel culture. Cool. Then, all of a sudden, one of their mates or their peers in the industry gets cancelled and suddenly they're on mute. They have nothing to say. Suddenly they all they all pretend like they don't know. They're all looking up at the sky. They have no idea what his name is. They don't want to comment on it. And it was so annoying. It was like, okay, and they, and, and and again, they, they sold this idea that they were friends. It was this rap pack, they were in the gang. And then suddenly when someone one person gets accused of something, guess what happens? They all go mute and they all disappear. And that friendship thing is all gone. So part of me thinks actually what what would have been kind of admirable to see is if number one, they defended the person if they're the friend. Or if they just shut the fuck up and just refuse to flip and talk about it. I said, hey, this guy's my friend. I don't want to say nothing about it because I can't be, you know, I can't be uh, unbiased because I am biased because that's my fucking friend. That would have been a better thing to go about it than to kind of do that whole thing that they all try to do. Because they try to just got annoying. Like you can't spend five years plus talking about counterculture and then one person you think is counterculture and suddenly it gets maxed up. Oh, it's not loading. Okay, cool. Thanks for telling me. So yeah, I don't know. That... That's just my personal opinion on it. Um, it doesn't necessarily matter because it's kind of over now. But yeah, big up, <laughs> big up Irish Shafir for essentially saying that he thinks comedians shouldn't have any consequences to their actions, which is, is kind of what's trying to say, in my opinion. But you know, what do I know? Moving.